What's up, Giants fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. And in this video, I want to talk about the week six loss on Sunday Night Football to the Cincinnati Bengals, the injury update on Andrew Thomas, and where Big Blue goes from here, because there's a lot to unravel with this football game on Sunday night and with the Philadelphia Eagles coming up in a few days from now. I want to evaluate where the team is at through six weeks. But before I do that, folks, if you're new to the channel and want to check out more of our content, feel free to check us out here on social media, on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Big Blue Avenue. We post a lot of live updates throughout the games, a lot of breaking news content throughout the course of the week, and we do our live streams Wednesday evenings during the New York football Giants season. So let's talk about what happened. Well, Losing 17 to 7, dropping to 2 and 4. It is never great to score seven points in a football game. You'll more than likely not um, lose. So it was a close game, though. It was a close game. The defense played well for the most part. They had a couple blunders. Obviously, the first possession, Joe Burrow, with I believe it was like a 47 yard touchdown rush, definitely unacceptable. Um, terrible look, too. The Giants stacked and overloaded the weak side, and Burrow just took it straight into the end zone, and then the Chase Brown game-clinching touchdown run. Uh, defense broke on that play. They over-pursued, and they lost Chase Brown. Other than those two plays, though, the Giants' defense held their own and gave their offense enough opportunities to win this football game, but they were unable to win. And I want to talk about Daniel Jones first and foremost. You know, he is an enigma. He is the guy everyone highlights every week. It's very easy to say Daniel Jones is the biggest problem on this team. I'm here to tell you that he's not, but he is also part of the problem. Uh, in this game, Jones went 22 of 41 for 205 yards, one interception, sacked twice. So the offensive line kept him pretty clean. For the most part, he was also the game's leading rusher with no Devin Singletary for the second straight week. Obviously, no Malik Neighbors for the second straight week as well, but with no Devin Singletary, it was a combination of Daniel Jones and Tyrone Tracy Jr. In the rushing game, Jones had 11 rushes for 56 yards. Everyone talks about primetime record, 1-14, 0-8 at home in primetime. Not great, but it was more than that. It was more than that this week, and you could argue, yeah, he missed some reads. He had that one bad interception um, in the red zone there. But the real reason why the Giants lost this game is because they were unable to run efficiently as they should have. Uh, the Giants were, the game plan for me should have been establish the run early and then take your shots down the field. I felt like the Giants, they tried to throw more than they should without Malik Neighbors in the lineup. And again, I get it. There was no Devin Singletary, but Eric Gray only had three carries. Tyrone Tracy Jr. only had 11. And you gave Daniel Jones 11 carries. So the game plan was clearly to throw the football. And over half of those rushes by Daniel Jones, they were not RPOs. There were plays where Jones took off. So the Giants were calling pass plays. It was just an imbalance for me between rushing and passing in this game. Uh, Tyrone Tracy was very solid. You know, he had his coming out party last week, sort of, if you want to consider that one. Uh, 11 rushes for 50 yards and one touchdown. Six catches for 57 yards. The turnover definitely hurt the Giants in that game, but the receivers are also a problem. You know, Darius Slayton played banged up in this game. Jalen Hyatt is not a vertical deep threat that Big Blue thought that they were, and yet the Giants were still throwing the ball like there was no tomorrow without Malik Neighbors. Um, not a good look. Slayton had six catches for 57 yards, had a drop. Uh, Wandale, five for 50, intermediate guy down the field. Look, Daniel Jones is part of the problem. Yes, he didn't play awful, though. Uh, Theo Johnson had three catches for 30 yards. Um, and yeah, there was also that one huge illegal man downfield on the Giants when they had that, what was it, like 60-yard bomb play to Darius Slayton that got called back. So that's not Daniel Jones's fault. If they hit that play, Giants potentially win this game or lose by one possession instead of two. So there are a lot of ways to carve this one up. For me personally, I am going to blame a couple different areas here. As I mentioned, the wide receiver play. And to be honest with you, Andrew Thomas's injury really proved costly this week. He was playing a tough game. I give him credit, but he gave up two sacks to Trey Hendrickson. And he also had that illegal man downfield penalty. 
So that wiped out a huge play. Now, I'm not sitting here saying, oh, Andrew Thomas is the one to, to blame. No, for me, it was more the play calling in this game. I would prefer to see more runs and old school physical mentality um, early on in the game before they fell behind. Um, I mentioned the two sacks given up by Andrew Thomas. Well, turns out Andrew Thomas suffered a serious foot injury in this game. He is likely out for the season. There's no official ruling on that yet. He is, outside of Malik Neighbors, the best player on this offense. He's one of the best left tackles in the NFL. Personally, I'm biased. I think he's top two. But uh, he's getting an MRI. There's a fear it could be a list frank injury. Now, what that is, it's an injury to the bones or ligaments or both in the middle part of the foot. And that's not something like, oh, it's a heel injury. You know, he could play a little differently, move a little differently. No, this is a pretty serious injury. It might require immediate surgery, and that would potentially end his season. Um, it definitely sucks to lose Andrew Thomas. He's one of the two offensive captains. He's the anchor of the offensive line, and he's a veteran. You know, uh, fifth-year guy now, got an awesome contract extension last season, playing on his fifth-year option, actually, this year. Um, so the extension is not fully kicked into play yet. But, yeah, it sucks, too, because the Giants, prior to this injury from Thomas, had all five of their starters play 100% of the snaps this season throughout the first six games. And that's huge. Look what happened when Andrew Thomas went down week one, 2023, against the Dallas Cowboys. Daniel Jones was running for his life, got sacked like a maniac, running like a chicken without a head. And now you lose Andrew Thomas, and there's several different things the Giants could do. What I would like to see the Giants do at this point is move Jermaine Eleminar from right tackle to left tackle. I don't want Evan Neal or Josh Azudu protecting Daniel Jones' blind side. Uh, based out of the options we have, it's likely Evan Neal is going to slide back into right tackle. 2022 first-round pick. I would roll with him out at right tackle. I know this sounds horrible, but I'm intrigued to see what he would do under this new offensive line coach, Carn Brasillo. And the fact that he has rode the bench for the first six weeks of the season. He's had full time to recover from the injuries he was dealing with last season and during the offseason. And he's learned a lot. He's watched. And seeing how Jermaine Illuminar could, could play, I think, could benefit Evan Neal. And playing next to a right guard like Greg Van Roten could certainly benefit his game. The other option is to put Neal at left tackle and leave Illuminar at right. Not happening. The other option would be. Leave Illuminar at uh, right, play Azudu at left, not happening. And the fourth and final option is put Azudu at right and then switch Illuminar to left. Um, I think the most likely option to happen would be to move Jermaine Illuminar to left tackle and start Evan Neal at the right. Personally, that's what I think is going to happen. Also, the offensive line, they could not contain B.J. Hill in this game. Seven tackles, two passes defended, and two QB hits. Former Giant, we drafted him back in 2018. Um, let's talk about that defense, though. They really kept Big Blue in this game. They sacked Joe Burrow four times, two of them from Aziz Ojolari, the 2021 second-round pick, the only member of that draft class remaining on this current roster. Got the opportunity due to Kayvon Thibodeau being out with – an injury this past week. Um, he was very impressive. Two tackles for loss, two QB hits, four total tackles. He was getting pressures. I uh, believe I read somewhere an 18.8% pressure rate, um, according to Fireside Giants. And then Tyler Newbin as well in the secondary had nine tackles. And yeah, he he's played well. Mike McFadden had five. Drew Phillips looked awesome in the slot, five tackles and one for a loss. And along with Ojolari up front, Brian Burns, eight tackles, one sack, two tackles for loss, two QB hits. He was stopping the run really well. He was getting pressure, doing what we paid for him to do. Dexter Lawrence had his seventh sack of the season through six weeks. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that is up there. That might even lead the NFL at this point due to Aiden Hutchinson's unfortunate injury. And, yeah, it was a rough go for the Giants, but there were some bright spots on this defense, and all the rookies are looking really good in this NFL draft class. However, one other injury I didn't talk about yet, Jamie Gillen missed Sunday night's game, dealing with some injury issues. Matt Hack was signed to replace him. Um, 
former Buffalo Bill, former Miami Dolphin, Matt Hack, former teammates with Greg Joseph as well. Um, I believe when they were both with Miami, if I'm not mistaken, because Greg Joseph never played a game for Buffalo. Um, Hack held, Joseph kicked, Joseph missed both kick attempts. It was very ugly. And I'm starting to think now, if Greg Joseph's time as a Giant is done, Graham Gano is eligible to return from injured reserve this week. You know Gano has dealt with injury issues, but he is the superior kicker to Greg Joseph. There's a reason why Joseph was on the street to start the season, and he didn't play one year throughout his NFL career. It might have been last season or it might have been 2021. I forget, but I think it was last season for some reason. Um, but, yeah, to quickly wrap up this game, Giants had just two penalties, and they held the ball for 34 minutes. Um, again, they went for it on fourth down. They converted three times. I think if you run on first down instead of pass on first down, with the way the Giants were running the football a couple weeks ago, you can, and especially last week with Tracy, they could have prevented themselves out of third and long, third and intermediate. It could have been a bunch of third and shorts, third and five or less. Um, so that's my point there. Um, I blame that a little bit more than Daniel Jones. Don't get me wrong. I love Brian Dable as a play caller. I think he's a great play caller. It's just there was some stuff missing this week against Cincinnati, and that's credit to Lou Anarumo and that Bengals defense held the Giants to seven points. Um, so now the Giants are two and four. They're heading to Philadelphia for week seven or heading, staying at home, excuse me, Eagles are coming up to MetLife to play the Giants. So quickly here, before we get to the live show on Wednesday, Giants have signed defensive tackle Armand Watts to the practice squad and release Duke Shelley. Again, Dory Jackson and Drew Phillips are both back healthy. No reason for Duke to stick around. They feel comfortable where they are at um, with their corner position right now. Again, it's not the best position group on the team, but I can confidently say that Drew Phillips, Cordell Flott playing – well, Flott is playing better, I should say, and Banks is starting to turn the corner a little bit. I thought the, the secondary did a great job against Jamar Chase and T. Higgins for the most part. Uh, Armand Watts comes in, 28-year-old, 6'5", 307, 22 career starts, 72 career games, uh, has a tie with Giants defensive line coach Andre Patterson. Five years in the NFL, three of them with the Minnesota Vikings. He was a 2019 sixth-round draft pick. He had five sacks in 2021 with the Minnesota Vikings. He has 140 career tackles, eight and a half sacks, 18 QB hits, and three forced fumbles. Uh, spent each of the last two seasons, one with Chicago and one with Pittsburgh. So it'll be interesting to see how he fits into this defensive scheme. I did not note on any injuries at the Giants' defensive tackle position. You know, Dexter Lawrence, Raheem Nunez, Roches, DJ Davidson, Jordan Riley, Elijah Chapman have all been doing very good jobs, especially Dexter. Um, I think the Giants might be looking for a little bit more of depth on the practice squad. Um, Casey Rogers is there, but I think the Giants want something more. And maybe they figured, oh, Watts is available. He spent the offseason with the Patriots. Let's bring him in. Maybe they'll elevate him from the practice squad to see what um, he can do. And, yeah, maybe they just want to upgrade at that position. It's not always injury-based as to why the Giants make moves. So, yeah, Armand Watts, welcome to Big Blue. And last and certainly not least, I want to thank you all for watching this video here today. Leave a like, smash that like button, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, drop a comment. What do you think of this video? Uh, do you think I'm crazy? Do you think Daniel Jones is the real issue, why the Giants lost this game, or the number one issue? Uh, yeah, I want to hear about it. Make sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Big Blue Avenue. Appreciate you all. And without further ado, let's go Big 